In today's video, you are going to learn how to update to 1.170 and avoid possible freezing issues. In today's video, I want to update my unit to 1.170 and you can see that it's done here and I have successfully done that and I will be updating it from 1.150 and I will be giving you some tips to help avoid the mega live and some of the freezing issues that have been reported on some of the forums. So stay tuned. I think you're going to really find this video helpful. And especially if you have been one of those people who have had some freezing associated with using the mega live, this should really help you. And as always, if you find the video enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. Whenever I do an update, I make it a habit of printing off the instructions and the software description, the summary of features that have been addressed. So for example, here, looking at the issues that they've tried to improve upon or potentially fix, they've looked at improved jig tracking performance, added support for mega live target lock, and improved upgradability. With this particular update, they have also given you some recommended sensitivity and contrast settings. And you will see that in default conditions that it is going to be sensitivity of 10, contrast of 10, and a dynamic contrast of balanced. They also give you a suggestion for shallow water, try dynamic contrast high, and again, sensitivity and contrast 10, and those are guidelines starting points. If you are in deeper water and looking for increased bait tracking performance, try dynamic contrast low, and once again, the sensitivity and contrast at 10 as your beginning set of guidelines. I wanted to do a quick video for you today on the Humminbird Mega Live 1.170 update. It is a little different than the traditional updates, and it still uses, as you can see, an SD card here. And I am doing 1.170 from 1.150. One of the prerequisites that you need is you need to make sure that you have software version 2.750 installed prior to doing the Mega Live 1.170 update. As with any update, I always take out any cards from the card reader. I have reset it to defaults, even though it doesn't specifically say to reset it to defaults. It's just better safe than sorry, and just a habit that I've got into. So typically what I would do in a normal update is I would take the cards out, and I would restore defaults, and I would also disconnect any additional accessories. However, in this case, we are updating the Mega Live, so I am obviously leaving the transducer connected in the back. The first step that it says in the instructions is install the 1.170 update to an appropriate card, and I've already done that. And then step two says go to the accessory test. So I'm going to press and hold my view button and it's going to come to sonar chart system. I'm going to go to system and then I'm going to go to accessory test and I am going to look specifically for the Mega Live to be connected. So I can see here that Mega Live version 1.150 is connected and therefore since it is connected i am good to go in terms of doing this update so step number two in the instructions is complete for more information on loading updates to an sd card please check out this video on my youtube channel step number three it says insert an sd card with the new mega live software so i have that sd card and i am going to push it in and it is going to then take me to step four. And step four is going to say, respond to the two prompts that appear to start the update process. 
So like all updates, it says update MegaLife software from version 1.150 to 1.170. While the software is updating, there will be a momentary disruption in the MegaLive sonar. Once the sonar returns, the software update will be complete. Until then, please do not disconnect or power off the transducer. So I always make sure that I have fresh batteries when I'm doing the update. So the answer to this question is yes. And then like the other updates as well, it says no or yes to abort software update to version 1.170. If I say no, it's going to go ahead and do the update. If I say yes, then it's going to abort it and it's not going to work. So I want to do the update, so I'm going to hit no. And right now you can see that it is updating the accessory. It says there will be a momentary disruption in the Mega Live sonar. Once the sonar returns, the software update will be complete. And please do not disconnect or power off the transducer. So right now you can see at the bottom that it is at 6%, 7%. And it says that this could take up to eight minutes. The update is currently at 52% and there's been no change in the screen and it's a little different one than when I did the 1.150 update. So I'm just going to pause the video here and as it gets closer to 100% I will resume it so that you can see what happens. When I did the 1.150 update, I was not on this particular screen, and you will sometimes get some lost source notifications. If you happen to get those notifications while doing the update for 1.150, and potentially with this one, uh, don't panic about that. That is completely normal. You do not need to respond to any of those lost source prompts. Just let the process continue. You can see we're now over 75%, so we are almost there. We are now over 80%, and it also says that this process could take up to eight minutes. I don't think it's going to take eight minutes based on the way this is speeding along. And you can see now that it just disappeared at 86% and that's okay. I am not worried about that. And don't panic with any of this. It says, do not pull the card out, restart the Helix or restart the Mega Live. Just let it go until the update is complete. And what you will notice, and I'm just going to take this and zoom this back out is that as soon as that prompt screen disappeared, you will now notice that the Mega Live version 1.170 is now connected. And that means that the update is complete. It was a very painless, quick and easy process. I do not think it took eight minutes. And I've done this on a Helix 12, and I, I know there's been you know, some concerns that Helix 12s have had some units, you know, potentially freezing. But what I'm going to suggest to you next, I think is going to help a lot of people avoid any freezing issues. And I think that's what a lot of people miss out. So stay tuned for this next clip because you're gonna wanna see what I do to make sure that my unit does not freeze. After the update is complete, I, I'm going to take out my SD card and I will use that in the future for future updates. Again, I will have to reformat it and that is just part of the process of updating. And I am also going to have to go in and redo some of my settings. So one of the first things you want to do is go menu and what you're going to do very first off in any restoring of your original settings is you want to go to custom mode and that is going to give you the greatest variety of options to customize your Humminbird Helix unit in the way that you desire. I have finished doing my 
restoration of the settings that I prefer. And I, I'll do another video on that another day, but just for simplicity's sake at this point, I like feet for my depth and Fahrenheit for my temperature and distance feet and statue miles and speed and miles per hour and things like that that are standard to what I do. Those of you that have had some issues with freezing on your Mega Live and your control head it is just freezing up and not letting you do anything with it, I want you to pay careful attention to what I am about to tell you because even as an experienced Humminbird user, sometimes we forget to do certain things. So let's go back to the beginning. I was excited. I first got my Mega Live. I put it in the water and I had my unit have issues of freezing up and I was frustrated. And then I, you know, I did my research. I did my homework. I, I read all the manual and then I remembered oh you've got to do a mega live installation so remembering that it was totally user error on my part that it was freezing up so if I go now across the tabs at the top and I go into accessories here that you can see at the top there is a mega live section and after I initially had issues with freezing, I remembered something about Mega Live installation. So I went into Mega Live, and this is an important category here with the ability to adjust your Mega Live so that it's working 100% properly. So I obviously I want Mega Live pinging on. I have choices of interference rejection going down and I have low, medium, high, and I have the choice of off too if I wish. I'm just gonna leave it on low right now, that's the default and that's fine. But what I really want you to pay attention to is there's a range grid off, I can put that on if I want, I can put the boat icon on if I want, and overlay waypoints I can that's already on but this is the one I really want you to pay attention to this mega live installation keep in mind that I did a restore to defaults and as I said the first time out the mega live was freezing on me because I never did the installation so after my first time out with mega live I went and I looked and I set the installation depth because I have a 52 inch shaft trolling motor. As I said, I have a 52 inch shaft Minn Kota Ultrex trolling motor and it sits pretty low in the water. And I have set my installation depth and I'm just right clicking. I'm gonna set it to three feet because I typically am fishing bigger water and I want the mega live down as low as I can get it uh, in the water column and I also have the port starboard installation and I have it set to starboard because the trolling motor mount for my mega live transducer is on the right hand side when it is deployed so it is on the starboard side of the boat and I will show you that momentarily in an eclipse so you can clearly see it. And I also like this setting of AHRS on pitch and roll, which helps stabilize the image. Once I did that mega live installation, I had no issues with freezing and therefore I 100% contributed any of my freezing issues to my user error in that I did not do the mega live installation as recommended in the manual. My Mega Live is on the starboard side of the trolling motor, so when that is deployed, it will be a starboard installation. For more information on my Mega Live installation and setup, please check out the video on my YouTube channel, Mega Live Installation and Setup. Forward facing sonar has certainly revolutionized the way that fishing is taking place today. We are seeing more and more amongst elite pros, recreational anglers, various species that there is a heads down philosophy where 
they are looking at the units and constantly on the lookout for fish and targeting fish that they can see in the water column and it's resulting in some phenomenal catches. So whenever there is an update, I always try to utilize the update because they are designed to enhance the performance of the transducer and the unit. So it makes sense to do the updates when they become available. After exiting Mega Live installation, I have had zero instances where my unit has frozen. So I really recommend you do your Mega Live installation settings. Another word of caution, I have explained to you how initially, we've got thunder rolling in the background here, I initially explained to you that when I first did this, I didn't do the Mega Live installation and I had freezing issues. And then I eventually updated my Mega Live transducer to 1.150. And I went back out, and sure enough, I had freezing issues again. And I went, you know, what is going on? And I, I read a lot of the forums and, and I try and answer questions on the forums. And through my YouTube channel, I have people address questions to me. And you know, I always want to be on top of things, but you know, as I say, I, I'm not perfect either. And I was going like, oh my gosh, did this update 1.150 cause my Helix 12 to start freezing again? And then it was like, oh, you idiot, you did this the first time. I restored the defaults. And when I restored the defaults, and so let's say here, if you look at this restore defaults, if I do that, each time after that, I have to go back up. Once I've done the updates and I'm going to accessories and I'm going to go to Mega Live and I'm going to go down to Mega Live installation. And I am going to have to do that process again and again and again, each time that I do a, an update. So I don't know whether the, if I exit, whether the restore Mega Live settings would do that. I haven't tried that. That's a possibility that that could work too. But it really, as long as you know that you are going to redo your Mega Live installation each time that you restore defaults and do an update, then I don't think you're going to experience any issues with your unit freezing. At least that's been my experience. So as always, if you find this video enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. Take care and bye for now.